Hello everyone and welcome back to the letter. I'm Two-Faced Teller, but you can call me V and this is round three. Uh, I have to start from the beginning and we will be choosing a few different choices in Isabella's route. And ultimately my plan is to keep Isabella alive but kill everyone else off. I don't know if I will succeed. I'm hoping that I will because admittedly I'm kind of tired of these people. <laughs> Talking about food, obviously. You're not my mom. I press my lips together and roll my eyes at her. I'm not entirely sure how I should feel whenever she goes on her mother hen mode. She means well. I'm glad someone's looking out for me, especially with my family living on the other side of the globe. But Becca's bossy attitude can be such a pain at times. She's more overbearing than Mama, and that already says a lot. You're not my mom. I didn't say I am. Nope, but you're acting like one. You don't need to boss me around all the time. She gives me a completely unimpressed look. Immediately, I brace myself for another round of reprimands from her. <sighs> I'm not bossing you around. I'm just telling you to at least mind what you're eating. Remember what happened last year? You ended up bedridden for two weeks after eating something bad, and I ended up having to listen to you cry about how those absences would take a huge chunk out of your paycheck. Do you want that to happen again? No, Mom. <sighs> Only a loud, frustrated sigh comes from her while she pinches the bridge of her nose, likely to help ease a headache starting to form. I bite my lip to keep myself from laughing out loud at the image she makes, expecting her to say more. But when at last she looks up, she sim she's simply carrying a resigned expression on her face. Oh, I'm serious! Not my mom, Rebecca! Maria Isabella Grace! I shut my mouth after that. Although I know she's not really angry, I don't want to push it. An angry Becca isn't something I'd like to cross paths with in my lifetime. I've seen it happen, and it wasn't pretty. Yeah, I'll stop. I grumble, but she doesn't seem to care much, only giving me a small acknowledging nod. Good. Look, if you need anything, tell me, and I'll help in any way I can. You don't have to do this alone. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. You have to take a break sometime. I forgot about some of these options, and now I'm just like, I don't know if they matter. Or what I know some of the I know the relationship ones, but I don't know some of these other ones, and I just I'm here and I have to do it. After I save. I'm looking at you in the face. We're gonna see eye to eye for the first time in our lives. <laughs> I need to face it. Whoever, whatever these feet belong to, I need to face it. And and if I'm going to die. If they're going to kill me, at least I'll know what my killer looks like. A cold comfort. So with a deep breath, I summon every ounce of courage I have left in me and shift my gaze upwards. I regret everything! Don't hurt me! Without thinking, I scramble towards the door. I struggle to open it, but it won't budge. I'll fight you fist to face! <laughs> I'm going down! Like a fighter! Why now? Why won't it open now? My heart sinks as reality dawns in. I'm locked in. Locked in with this thing. It slowly approaches me as I wrench the doorknob violently back and forth. Whoa! Beast mode. Yes. The door finally swings open and, and I couldn't have been happier. Wasting no time, I leap out of the door and don't look back. Oh, door open. My feet pound against the door in rhythm with the loud, fast beating of my heart. By the time I run past the hallway and find myself atop the grand staircase, my chest feels so tight like it's going to burst. But that's nothing compared to the feeling of the hope, the sight of the exit. The sight the exit gives me.
Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me, and I go tumbling down. My shoe slips, and I find myself falling. Isabella? Isabella? Are you alright? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rosa's group joined us in the parlor. I want nothing more than to say that no, I'm not alright. I want to leave this place because I remember everything as clear as day. This letter and that woman in the attic. It's real. Letter. I I'm sorry, I didn't know. Careless. I've been so careless. How do I even tell them that without looking like I've gone mad? Should I even tell them? Oops. She, I mean, she's gonna get killed anyway, so... I blurted out before I could think twice about what I'm going to Rose, say. We need to get out of here. This place is cursed. Rose casts a nervous glance at the people in the room. Most are still engaged in a conversation with their peers, but those, those curious enough to turn their heads in our group group's direction have been given her trademark saleswoman smile. A tight expression is on her face when she pulls me aside. Isabella, we've already had a conversation about this weeks ago. Those are just stories. And I'm telling you that it's not. I saw something in there. It's not... It's not human at all. I thought it was just nothing, but... Isn't this letter proof enough? She gently reaches out to pluck the paper off my hand. Without even taking a glance at it, she folds it back neatly. Look, I'm really getting worried about you. I know you want to see this open house through, but your condition is more important. Give me a few minutes to wrap things up here, and I'll drive you to the nearest hospital. No, no! You don't understand! There isn't a condition, Rose. No concussion at all. I'm fine. But this place isn't, and you're being stubborn about it. Before Rose could open her mouth for a retort, a hand lands on both our shoulders, pulling the two of us a distance closer. Now, now, ladies, what seems to be the problem here? Nothing, sir. I just had to clarify a few things with my colleague. Well, it certainly seems... intense. A smile fits the two of you better, in my opinion. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Especially darling little Lily here. He gives my shoulder a gentle squeeze while an inscrutable smile spreads across his face. Isabella, sir. Of course, of course. But my point still stands. And with two beautiful ladies here, I'm sure. And I'm sure little Lily here would certainly appreciate it if you remove your pretty hands from her, darling. The pressure on my shoulder lifts as soon as those words leave his wife's lips, while the scowl on her face is like a splash of cold water on me. It is also impossible to miss the displeased frown in Miss McCullough's face. The, realiza the realization that we might lose this sale because of my outburst instantly dawns on me. Rose will be beyond pissed. I think I need to step out for a while. I'll be back. Man, I think this concussion is actually, like, way worse than I thought it was. I'm gonna... leave. <laughs> and I'm never coming back. Bowing my head, I mutter a quick apology and gather my stuff to make quick a quick exit. Doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not, I've caused trouble and Rose can be quite unforgiving of behavior like this. I'm almost at the door when she catches up to me. Isabella, wait! The apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler. Eyes softer, a fond smile spreading on her lips. Ma'am Hana in particular didn't look too pleased with too pleased with what I did. I owe Rose a big apology. I hope she likes free donuts. You don't seem too happy about it. I am happy. Doesn't this look like a happy face to you? Really? And here I was thinking you found another one stuffed in the sofa. Or is it the wardrobe this time? He meant that as a joke, but how close it is to the truth made my blood run cold in my heart. My own heart beat a heavy weight in my chest. Lie. <laughs> I turn my eyes back to the passing view outside. Maybe if I remain quiet long enough, he'll get a hint. Seriously, what happened? You're already assuming something happened. I'm not. It's what you said earlier, and that's why I'm asking. What did they do? They didn't do anything, alright? It's... it's nothing. Work's just been stressful. My boss has been in a bad mood lately over a lost sale. Preparing everything for the open house has been tiring. And then there's the tour. You've seen how big the place is. I wish he'd just st drop the subject and be done with it. It's not like he'll do something if I tell him. Outside, the sun has already started its descent, casting a vibrant orange glow on the tall buildings. I wonder how long before we reach the movie house. Zack's been pretty excited about his movie. I'd hate to ruin that for him. 
But right now, I just want the day to be over. Just so you know, people we interrogate often avoid our eyes when they're hiding something. I... I'm not hiding anything! I didn't say you were. Then why are you still asking about it? Your face is a lot more expressive than you think. Can you please just drop it? My voice comes out harsher than I'd intended, and I immediately regret having taken that tone on him. As one would expect, Ash is taken aback but recovers quickly. An uncomfortable silence settles in the car while I find myself wishing I hadn't snapped at him like that. Stupid, stupid Isabella. It's the first time in months you get to spend time with your friend and you're already messing things up. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell. He responds with nothing more than a nod and I take that as his way of dropping the topic. For now, if the way his jaw tightens in a sign of what he still thinks about the matter. I just hope I can give him a proper answer next time. Time passes quickly between us in this manner, and before I know it, we're already at the movie house. Meet with the professor. I'll think about it, but if ever, I'd like to give talking to Andrew a try. Is that okay? Won't he have other things to do? He is a bit busy, but he'll make time for me. He's my go-to person when I'm stuck in something. He won't mind if I bring a friend with me this time. If you're sure. I guess that settles it then. Guys, I said keep it down. You keep insisting that we still watch it, yet you're not even paying attention yourselves. It ain't a big deal, Rebecca. I'm the one who broached the subject in the first place. Memhana, Memhana calls me over the moment she notices my presence at the lounge door. Her lips are twisted in a frown. She doesn't seem particularly happy to see me, and I'm not surprised. Who wouldn't be? I almost created a scene. Mr. Wright, however... Why, if it isn't the little Lily? I trust you're feeling well now. It's Isabella, sir. Not Lily. I appreciate your concern. I'm feeling better now. I really don't understand why they can't get my name right. It's a fairly common name. It shouldn't be too hard to remember. Is Luke only, like... The last time we were here, he was, like, pretty grumpy, wasn't he? He's just like, oh, I don't want to... I don't want to be here. I want a helicopter pad and whatever. And I feel like he's only chipper now because a scene was created and he finds that interesting. Oh, this this house tour is so boring. Oh, but what is this? Regardless, I hand him their copy of the agreement. I, I can take that. Thank you very much. With how elegantly she plucks the papers off my hands, it's easy to think that there isn't any trace of irritation in her. But it is there, raiding in her stiff stance and the way she's standing at a fair distance from her husband, and how the two look to be ignoring each other. Seeing the scene, it soon becomes clear to me that I'm not the one who has put her in a bad mood. Is she upset? Is she, like, jealous or something? Like, this is a big change. Did they fight? Hmm, most probably. I've seen it happen dozens of times with my previous clients. It's a shame, especially with their new mansion. I never did like it when my own mama and papa fought. I hope they'll make up soon. Apparently satisfied with what she's seen, Mam Hana clasped her hands together before extending it to us for a shake. Rose and I release the breath we've been holding, both of us more than happy to return the gesture. Love, servants or not, you're going to make people listen to your input nonetheless. Uh, talking about the housewarming party. No more than a week, ma'am. Barring unexpected delay, of course. You can leave it to us. Excellent. Well then, I'll leave you two to it. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Oh, and before we forget... She discreetly folds something into both her hands and winks, a finger raised to her lips de demanding our silence. What happened the day before was quite... unfortunate. But you did get us what we wanted in the end. That, at the very least, is commendable. But this is... Ma'am, I can't accept this. Don't you worry, darling. It's a small thing coming from us. Consider this your bonus for a job well done. Well, don't mind if I do. My instant noodle days are over. Okay, let me do that again. Guess what, guys? I'm paying! I sold the house! As the news sinks in, their expression goes from sheer bewilderment to utter surprise. That's more like it. You heard me right, lady and gentlemen. As of today, I, Maria Isabella Grace Cruz Santos, am free from my instant noodle binge. 
Seriously? Hold it, Belle. You sold the house? Yep. Which house is this? In Aslam Village? The one with the open house yesterday? The one and only. Come on, Becca. I know you've got a better memory than that. Oh. Oh, wow. Uh, that's... She lets out a hum, although she's nodding. She gives the impression of someone who has heard something unbelievable and is still forcing her brain to absorb it. Does she think we wouldn't be able to sell it? Have some faith in me, Becca. Am I not your best friend or what? You don't believe me? The words tumble out of my mouth before I can stop them. I've been trying to avoid bringing up yesterday's, li yesterday's little spat, and judging from the looks on their faces, it seems they are too. Me and my stupid mouth. I'm sure it ain't the way you're thinking, Bella. No, no, I do believe you. But don't you think the sale happened a bit too fast? The open house only started yesterday, and now you already have a buyer? It happens from time to time? Yeah, but... Look, I'm happy for you. Just yesterday, you've been really worried where to get money for your dad's new treatment. And now, all of a sudden, you have something. What if the sale doesn't push through, or I don't know? They're a fraud, or they suddenly back out? Isn't it a little too early to celebrate? Rebecca does have a point, Bella. If you haven't closed the deal yet, there's still a chance they'll go back on it. Mm, they don't seem like it to me. The lady appeared to really want it, and she approached me without even finishing the tour. Pressured me into it, more like. But I'm not going to tell Becca about that. Knowing her, she'd be only worried. And she already hired someone to handle the house's interior design. You're joking. Who would do that? The rights, apparently. It's actually pretty funny. She's a bit too excited to get the property. She forgot to buy it. At any rate, they've already signed the agreement today, so it's just a matter of time. And don't tell anyone about this, but Ma'am Hannah also gave us something extra. Something as in... As in, it's why I can treat you two to a free meal. I'm more surprised you accepted it. She didn't really give us a choice in the matter. So don't lose sleep over this, okay? The couple really want the house. If Rose didn't stop them, they'd likely have paid up front for it yesterday. That's despite the legends, too. I even tried to show them the letter. But nope. I want this house, darling. Go take all our money. You don't really think they believe that, do you? I'm pretty sure for them, those are just rumors as well. No one is that superstitious in this day and age, Belle. Well, there's you. Right. You know what? I'll just eat all of these by myself. I began to gather their plates to my side, the food in each still untouched. I laugh... A laugh almost escapes my mouth with the way Zack's expression quickly changes to disappointment. Becca's hand interrupts me just as I'm about to pull her plate closer to me. <laughs> I'm kidding! Don't go all pouty on me again! I'm just concerned you'll get hurt if this doesn't happen. I know how badly you want to close this deal for your papa. I'm sure he's gonna be fine now, though, with the money. They don't know yet. I think I'll call them tomorrow. Let them know things will be easier. Mama said this morning he's showing progress with the new treatment, too. It's just a matter of time. I allow myself to smile, genuine and uninhibited. It's strange talking about this with other people, even those who have known you long enough. But today, things simply feel a whole lot lighter with them here. Lunch passes in an enjoyable fashion. The abrupt break in the silence nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Blindly, I fish out my phone from under the mess of papers and cushions where I've carelessly thrown it before taking a shower hours ago. Ash's name flashes brightly on the screen. Is he calling because of this afternoon? Thank you so much for spamming my inbox, scaredy cat. Hey, Ash. What's wrong? I just had a long day. The couple who bought the house wanted us to finish processing the papers within the week. It's a little hectic, but we'll manage. Really? You sold it? Don't sound so surprised. I told you, you don't stand a chance. The rights won't take no for an answer. You've been on the losing end from the very start. Ha! Whoever said I was interested in the house in the first place? But you said... <laughs> Despite his light tone, his snicker only comes off as annoying to my ears. I have to fight the urge to end the call right then and there. Stupid Ash. You're such an ass. And just so you know, I'm not treating you to a separate celebration. Or ever. No, that's just unfair. And here I was looking something up for you. Didn't you say you wanted to talk to Andrew? I pause. 
I did say that, but I didn't think he'd actually go through the trouble, considering how much he scoffed at the whole topic in the first place. Is he... is he okay with that? Totally. Besides, I need to ask him about something. I might as well do it soon. What do you say you come with me tomorrow morning? Well, there's no harm in it, I suppose. I've got a free day anyway. Great, I'll just pick you up. Don't oversleep. Don't compare me to you. I'm not the one who sleeps like a rock. <laughs> Another round of chuckles come from him. Oh, I will live for the day he'll stop making fun of me. Just you, you, you asshole. As I'm about to end the call, he clears his throat. And His sudden, diffident tone sends my eyebrow shooting up into my hairline. Is the world ending today? Yeah? Did you forget something? Are you... Do you think you... We... <clears throat> Never mind. Good night. He hangs up instantly. Rude. Completely rude. I didn't even get to thank him. The busy tone, the muffled, echoes through the receiver. No one is saying this will work. Even I'm doubtful it will. But right now, I'll take anything. Anything to get out of this nightmare. Sleep comes easier tonight. And for the first time in a long time, I dream. Of clear skies, of un unrestrained laughter from children playing in the streets, and of small, cramped dwellings. To an outsider, the sight does not paint a pretty picture. However, this is home to me. Morning dawns bright and clear the following day. Though the air still feels muggy and I miss the chilly autumn weather, it's one of those rare weekends when I'm up even before my alarm rings. If it wasn't for Ash, for Ash's call last night, I'd probably sleep in. When 9am rolls around, I'm already heading downstairs where Ash is waiting for me in his car. His hair is a disheveled mess, eyes drowsy and overall looking like he hurried to get out of bed. Or fell out of it. Or both. He looks adorably rumpled this way, but I'm not going to tell him that. It's on, it'd, it'd only bloat his unbearable ego. Good morning, Ash. He makes a motion with his finger around his ear, tone it down. Can you even drive? He answers me with a slight raise of his hand, a yawn, and nothing more. He has never been particularly fond of mornings, and for that I'm thankful to every god in the universe. Less mental capacity for him to make fun of me. Ha! Huh. There's a reason why mornings are my favorite. It doesn't take long for us to reach our destination. I only feel slightly bad for thinking, man, this version of Ash is so much more bearable. <laughs> it doesn't take long for us to reach our destination. The small caf cafe situated in Lugsborn's busiest street, the same one I'd often visit with Becca for its cheap food. I've never gone here on a Sunday, and it's striking how different it appears without the usual weekend and Saturday rush. The atmosphere especially reminds me of something we also have back home near the university I used to attend. I wonder what happened to it. It was being renovated before I left, so I never got to visit one last time. The place has always had a calming effect on me. But today, despite standing in a place similar to it, anxiety easily washes over me as soon as I step out of the car. I'm quite used to dealing with people I've never met before thanks to my work, but still, I, I don't know him. In spite of the fact both Ash and Becca have vouched for him, what will he think of me and my story? What if he thinks I'm crazy? Hell, even my own friends thought so. I draw in a breath to quell the panic beginning to rise in me. Oh, well, only one way to find out. A few hesitant steps forward, and then Ash suddenly pulls me back by my elbow. Hold on, scaredy cat. Not too fast. Without warning, he flicks my forehead hard. That hurts! What was that for? He's already walking away when I look up and I hurry to catch up to him, puzzled. I really don't understand this guy. At least explain why you're f you're flicking other people's foreheads all of a sudden. So rude. Get yourself together, will you? He's not going to bite. He's very accommodating, too. I wasn't scared of him or anything. You don't look like it. Didn't sound like you were okay last night, either. Huh? What was that last one? Hey, don't just ignore me. All questions and retorts die on my mouth once he opens the door to the shop. A cast iron bell attached to its chimes soft attached to it chimes softly announcing our arrival. 
The smell of freshly brewed coffee welcomes us as soon as we step in. Like the usual, several tables and chairs have been set up for the patrons, but most of the customers have forgot forgone them in favor of the more comfortable throw pillows and bean bags the staff has laid out on the on the floor. Becca would love to know they have something like this on Sundays. She's been complaining how uncomfortable the library chairs are for a long time now. Ash leads me to a secluded spot near the window, where an old man, probably in his 50s or 60s, is seated, enjoying a brew and a book. Professor Clark, it's just Andrew now. I'm no longer your professor, Detective Inspector Frey. The guy, Andrew, looks up from his book and gives him, gives him a smile. A sheepish look crosses Ash's face at the older man's admonishment. More unusual, in my opinion, is seeing him appear like a parent has just scolded him. But it suggests a familiarity between them, one that goes beyond what someone expects from a simple student and mentor. With another warm smile, he gestures for us to take the empty seats opposite him. Have you been waiting long? Quite some time. But I come here early on weekends. Best time to get their first serving of Barracos. <laughs> They're the only place that serves it here. I took the liberty of ordering for you two. I hope you don't mind. I thought it'd be best to talk over a decent helping of coffee. Soon enough, a waiter brings us two more cups and sets down a basket of pastries. Aren't you going to introduce the lady? Ah, right. Sorry. Isabella, this is Prof... Andrew. He's one of my professors back at the university. Andrew, this is Isabella Santos. Santos? Portuguese? Spanish? Brazilian? Mexican? Filipina, actually. It's a pleasure to meet you, Professor. Ah, your name carries a lot of history, Miss Santos. Just Andrew is fine. Don't do what Ashton's doing. He doesn't listen to this old man. He doesn't listen to anyone more like. The awkward tension typically present, present in first meetings dissipates after that. I was expecting someone strict and to an extent someone severe. But Professor Andrew Clark is definitely the opposite of what I have in mind. The more personable kind, similar to a grandfather who dotes on you at family gatherings. It's obvious why Ash has taken a liking to him. Ashton tells me there's something you wish to discuss that I could help with. Let's hear it then. They say he's like a grandfather, but like, isn't he old enough to be their father? <laughs> I give Ash a hesitant glance, but he just nods and gestures toward Andrew with his head. He's, I guess he just has grandfather energy. He's leaving this to me. It's my story to tell after all. I keep it short and concise. I found a letter in this old mansion now I'm cursed, exactly as I have told Ash and Zack when they asked about it. I don't mention the name of the place. No use saying it now that someone else legally owns it. No use dragging other people into my problems. I'm sure it's that letter I found, but I don't know anymore. I just want to know how to escape this nightmare. Of course. We're talking about the one in Anselm Village, aren't we? How did you... <laughs> don't look so surprised. There's only one place popular enough here if we're going to talk about hauntings. I once had a colleague who wrote about it and the urban legend surrounding the place. Years worth of study, but fascinating. It's a shame he passed away at such a young age. He would have done a much better job at explaining topics like this one compared to me. Ashton here might disagree, but it's an interesting topic in sociology, if you care to have an open mind. Studying the science and theory behind it is completely different from outright believing in it. You don't believe in those stories, sir? Now, now, this isn't a question of belief. All I'm saying is things like these speak a lot about a place's culture and history. And it's not just limited to ghosts. Monsters, gods, you name it. Even you, Miss Santos. B what about me? How you respond to these stories. It tells a lot about you and your upbringing. In the same way it tells me why our detective inspector here finds such topics absurd. Interesting, isn't it? My head is starting to spin from all this. I'm not the smartest person around, but I understand what he's trying to get at, I think. It's still too much to take in at once. I look to Ash for help, but his eyebrows are drawn in a frown. If he keeps staring like that at his cup, I'm pretty sure it'll crack soon. There's still something you're not telling. Didn't I tell you everything the other day? Yeah, but you mentioned the rights. Then you proceeded to drop the topic right after. What's with that? They don't have anything to do with this. Rights? Luke and Hana Wright? Yeah, they're the ones who got the place. Ah, uh, I'm not surprised. They're the kind who gets what they want once they set their eyes on it. From what I've heard, word gets around. 
A heavy sigh escapes my lips. Popular or not, they're just my clients. I'll be a little pushy, but just client. End of story. I wish he'd stop pestering me about them. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Ash! I know you're trying to help, but you're not helping. <laughs> what is it again that Becca does when dealing with a particularly difficult child? The pesky, annoying kind? I wish I could remember. I could certainly use that same trick right about now. Ashton, look here. I know you're trying to help, but the deal's almost already closed. The papers are being prepared. Once it's done, it's over. I'm just their agent. And when is that happening? When what? Is there even a purpose to this line of questioning? Your working relationship with them. When's it going to end? Because of... What I've been watching. <laughs> and how my brain is kind of... Well, no, I think it's a thought I would have had anyways, even if I wasn't influenced by outside sources of my thought process at the moment. Is uh, the thought of, what if, like, somehow, some way, Isabella, is Isabella and Luke slept together? <laughs> How? Like, if Ash finds out, how, how, how fucking pissed would he be? <laughs> what do you mean you slept with him? <laughs> do you know what kind of man he is? I can't believe- No, I don't even want to think about it, now it's in my mind. I can't believe this. <laughs> that must be like a huge blow considering. The man you hate the most did went down and dirty with the one that you like. Oh no, NTR, I just realized what that is. But is it truly NTR if you're not actually dating the person? About a week from now. It depends on how long the approval process would take but they wanted us to rush it. Really? You're absolutely sure about that? Yes, really. Unless they want to buy a house again and want me and Rose to be their agent. If yes, then I don't see a problem with it. Now stop annoying me about it. Don't accept it. What? Why? It's my job. Oh lord, even my younger siblings aren't this difficult to deal with. Then again, Ash is far from a younger sibling to me. If you'd only spell it out, surely I'd understand. We wouldn't even have to talk about it right now. That's how it is, right? Find and even ground talk about it like the adults we are. It wasn't like this before. But somewhere along the way, something has changed into changed in us as people, as friends. I wish there's a way I could tell when and or when or why. Instead, I'm left searching blindly for reasons. The next thing we know, we'll be drifting further and further apart. How frustrating. Now, now, kids. Settle down. We're not going to solve anything by shouting. Sorry, Sir Andrew. And we're not going to solve anything either if you keep omitting things. Speak for yourself. I'm not the only one doing it. You'll have to forgive my former student, Miss Santos. He's always been the curious kind. Many people think he's lazy, but it's actually the opposite. <laughs> I see that hasn't changed. Oh, really? How is he, back when he was your student? I'm sorry, I need to ask. He doesn't talk much about that. And there's a reason why. Please, don't. <laughs> Tried to sleep on the first day of class. He didn't repeat it after what I made him do when I caught him. Students like him are the easiest to deal with, once you know what piques their interest. I'd have to say, he's one of the very few who is actually interested in the subject, though. Ah, but there was this one time when... By the end of the conversation, Ash looks like he's praying for the ground to swallow him. He's never been one to talk about himself. What I know about him are mostly bits and pieces I've gleaned over the years. He's an atrocious singer, he's bad at art, and he has a personal vendetta against mornings. Now? Now it feels he isn't that hard to figure out after all. It's past noon when Andrew has to leave us for another meeting. But before we separate... Miss Santos, a word of advice. Just keep in mind that when it comes to cases like this, things aren't always what they seem. Naturally, the mansion and the letter was brought up several times during our talk. 
And though Ash is right in that Andrew offers a different perspective, he has left me with more questions than answers instead. What is she? What does she want from me? Is she ever going to leave? They all continue to bug me after we left the coffee shop. I don't even notice when Ash takes a different turn on our way back. Where are we going? You can drop me off at the park. Guess. You have three chances. I'm serious, Ash. Where are we going? He doesn't answer, but shortly he stops his car in front of a small nondescript food stall, a little way ways away from the movie house. If I wasn't paying closer attention, I would have missed it without a doubt. He motions for me to wait as he gets off the car and walks in its direction. Sheesh, if you want to buy something, just say it. No need to make yourself look mysterious. It makes you look more like a dork than cool. The wait isn't long, however. Soon he's walking back holding two fish fish-shaped cones in both hands, ice cream parfait across of the two. By the time he's back inside, I've given up any effort to figure out what he bought. Not that it looks bad, it's actually quite cute. Here, take it. I have to move my head back a little when he thrusts it at me to avoid the ice cream and the fruit toppings from ending up on my nose. What's this for? Oh my god, I think we have that at our mall, but I haven't gone to it yet because I never get the chance. My arm's getting tired. Five, four, three, two. With a wary glance, I take it off his hands. I still don't understand why there's a need for ice cream today. Nonetheless, I take a small bite. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> it must have shown in my face because he chuckles as soon as I take another one. Saw the place open the other day when we watched Zach's movie. Thought I should give it a try. It doesn't seem like a bad place to get food from time to time. And you're giving me free ice cream because... Do I need to have a reason? Are you really going to ask me that? Here's the thing with Ashton Frey. He does not treat anyone to free food because he feels like it. He's that much of a Scrooge. Hell, he even asked me to teach him how to haggle once. Haggle of all the people who'd asked me that. I'd have expected such a, re such a request from Becca, but Ash, not at all. If I'm going to be honest, he looks a bit constipated with that expression on his face right now. I think he's starting to regret ever buying this. I, uh, the other day? The movie with Zack and Rebecca? Rebecca's there, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Smooth. Anyway, during the movie, we, uh, that is, you, that's to say, you, uh, we... Ash is cute when he's not talking or trying to make jokes all the time. And he's cute when he's flustered, but that's just me being, like, any male character that gets flustered is cute, so. We, all, we, we get points in there, but I guess it's not really in it. The points would disappear really quickly when he's not being cute. They fluctuate. It's a really bad system. Shit. Should have written down something first. Get to the point, Ashton. Right. I'm sorry. What? N not I'm sorry for, you know, not getting to the point. I'm sorry for the other day. I got carried away. I said things that upset you. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. Oh my god, he apologizes? Damn. What stopped you from apologizing the last time? <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay? That's all? That's all you're going to say? You're not still angry, are you? You didn't have to buy me anything. A simple sorry would have been enough. I bite into the cone again, a small attempt to keep myself occupied and relieve the heat crawling up my face. It doesn't work, but at least I don't have to look at him. Why I'm feeling embarrassed over an apology, I have no idea. It's not like it wasn't called for. They were being mean, especially him and... and... In that fraction of a second, it hits me. He skipped his day off just for today. I should be the one apologizing and thanking him. Silence is an awkward company while we finish our respective snacks. There are words for this. For people like us, for understandings and sentiments like this. Yet in this instant, they won't come. As promised, he drops me off at the park right after, phrases unsaid, still hanging heavily in the air. In this weather, the city park gives off a lazier and more languid vibe than usual. Where children are usually seen running around and playing, there are now people lying, laying back on their picnic blankets, simply enjoying the afternoon sun. 
The smell of food drifts from nearby carts, and if the wind blows in the right direction, one would catch the whiff of freshly trimmed grass. Maybe I should try walking home today to get my mind off things. To try and find the words somehow. I haven't done that in a while. Thanks, Ash. For today. No problem. Say hi to Rebecca for me. Yeah, I will. Even so, I linger. We both do. A mild, humid breeze brings the smell of dried leaves, warmed earth, and a far-off distant memory. A false starts and awkward first meetings. Same place, same people playing the same parts. Funny how all of the days my brain chooses to remember it now. Wait, Belle. Ash exits his car. He strides. His strides are unsteady when he approaches me, or maybe this is his uncertainty showing. I'm not quite sure. He has never looked uncertain to me before. Always calm, always sure, always collected. He stops a short distance from me, close enough that he's within arm's reach, but just far enough for his voice to be heard over a decent small talk if this is what it's going to be. He fumbles for something in his pockets. Here. Catch. The small bag lands cleanly on my outstretched hand before it hits the ground. I raise an eyebrow at him and he responds by shrugging and stuffing both his hands back to back into his pockets. Somewhere to the side he finds an interesting spot to look at. Sometimes, sometimes you have to wait, Papa said long ago. For once this time I listen. His voice is halting, hesitant when he finds it again. My mom used to make me carry around one of those when I was young. To ward off evil and bring you luck, she said. I don't believe in this kind of thing now. But, but if it makes you feel safe, since you're a total scaredy cat, then, then I guess it's okay to give you one. Perhaps at the moment there aren't any words for it. I've never been good with those. But right now I could thank him in the best way I know. You're not bad after all. You can be nice when you're trying. You're not that bad after all. I close a short distance separating us, and lightly in place of phrases one couldn't spin together or answers too early to seek out, I lean over and give him a little peck on the cheek. The touch is short, fleeting. This is not what I expected this early on. The kind that speaks volumes of boundaries we don't often cross as friends. Nevertheless, the thought is there. It lingers. And the gentle autumn wind that passes and the empty space separating us when I step back and look up at him with a smile. It's easy to express gratefulness this way. It's easy to express gratefulness this way, isn't it? At least with my own family, that's the case. For the two of us, I'm not quite sure. Did he understand? After all, gratitude is considerably harder to put into words when you've spent the latter half of your friendship teetering between good-natured jests and ruffling each other's feathers. Seconds pass before he clears his throat. His face has gone remarkably red, whether from the heat or something else, I can't quite tell. But he understands. I know he does. Because the smile on him when he finally meets my eyes is, gen is the gentlest I've seen him show. I, uh, gotta go. Got some reports I forgot to file the other day. Yeah. See you around. Thanks for the ice cream. And the charm. Don't lose it. We won't find one here again if you do. I won't. I might move like I have two left feet. But I know how to take care of my own stuff. I'm not a total klutz. <laughs> I know. And Belle? Remember that one time? Devlin Court? Oh, I do. With all the clarity in the world. You... At the time, when we... What I'm trying to say is that you can rely on me. If something... Anything happens. Not the exact same thing, of course. But... You get the idea. I'll be around. I was thinking about this man's heart is beating, like, a mile a second right now. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. You're not that bad after all. Before leaving, he waves at me one last time. The next time we talk, we'll be back the way we were, we were. Because at the end of the day, that's how things have always moved between us. What we're familiar with, what we're comfortable with. But for all that, it's always easy to put my own faith in him. I just hope... I can keep them safe, keep him safe. A light wind blows again, sending dried leaves swirling and the distinct smell of earth into the air. For the first time, the sunlight feels less harsh. Maybe a walk is good. I need to visit the groceries, too. Come to think of it, wasn't there an art store that opened recently near the park? Well, there goes my good mood. 
Are you happy now, Hana? Why must he treat me this way? I am happy, and I'm sure he will be too once he gets over this little upset. There is no point in aggravating him anymore, so I keep myself from commenting on the issue any further. A sweet smile and a bowed head, no need to provoke. This is how I cope. So, when do we leave? Where are we even going? We are scheduled to leave after lunch for the... Ermengarde Mansion? Das ist ja interessant. It's just Deutsch name. Is that infamous mansion? Yeah? What in the world did you just say, Johannes? I have seen it from afar. It's a huge property. Very beautiful if it wasn't left abandoned. Certainly a house befitting lords and ladies of the land. A house good enough for nobles, huh? It is well known then. I guess that doesn't make it a total waste of time. Our old sous chef mentioned going there for Halloween last year. We have not seen him since. Mm, not that I mind. He made terrible pumpkin soup. I smile even as they turn their backs to me. The ride to the mansion is quiet, with Luke having stared out the window the entire w the entire way, not paying any attention to anything around him. Oops, I did not mean to do that. But it's fine, because there was no text. What's been bugging my mind, however, is that Isabel. What's her problem? I still don't quite understand what is happening. One moment she's scrambling to give us the paperwork to finalize the sale, then she's panicking over some sort of prank letter or another. The second thing on my mind is how touchy my darling husband is being towards the poor dear. I cannot even plaster a smile on my face, a horrid scowl taking, taking its place. There's no way I can pretend nothing is wrong as I hum. And I'm sure little Lily here would certainly appreciate it if you remove your pretty hands from her, darling. He's quick enough to detract his hand, which is all that the girl needs to, well, for lack of a better word, escape. I think I need to step out for a while. I'll be back. Her partner follows, shouting after her without hesitation. There is an awkward air among us as we are left in the wake of whatever that was. The others murmur and gossip with each other, speaking of the poor, daft girl and telling the tale to whoever was not audience of the act in the first place. It doesn't take too long for the woman, Rose, to return and pull us aside into the study for what I rightfully assume is damage control. Rose invites Marianne in too, hoping to apologize to her as well. But the, the woman, but the woman refuses, saying she is not one of her clients anyway. That leaves myself, Rose, and Lou, the last all too eager to make himself comfortable in a study he's no doubt already claimed as his own. I can't apologize enough about what just happened. Please forgive Isabella. She's been under a lot of pressure lately. She's young, and all those rumors about this being haunted just got to her head. And it must be this terrible heat, too. Not a drop of rain for days now. Oh, it's fine. The poor girl must feel so embarrassed about what she just did. But I say, let bygones be bygones. After all, she's only a child. She looked, what, 19? I shoot Luke an accusing look at these words. After all, he tried flirting with the girl. The nerve of him. Man, he really does just... If she breathes... Why not? <laughs> the nerve of him. And not only that Isabella girl... Isabelle girl, but also Marianne and Rose too. What kind of husband would think that it's even remotely good idea to make moves on three different woman while, women while his wife stands there? Did he drink while I wasn't looking? <laughs> yeah. She's a bit older than that. But again, I apologize. And if there's any way I can make up for what just happened, just... I know what you can do. Be a darling flower and get us one of those bottles you plan to serve. Pop it open. We were planning on serving some champagne. Uh, I can get that. That would be lovely. Much obliged. Do you want a glass as well, Miss Wright? Oh no, I'm fine. I really shouldn't be drinking right now. And Luke shouldn't be either. But right now, I'm just too tired for any sort of argument. I don't have the heart to scold him in public as well. I'm certainly not his mother. I just want to get this horrid day done with, go home and sleep. Perhaps I'll even have a strong cuppa before I head off to bed. Yes, that sounds nice. When Rose comes back with the champagne, I beckon her over. As I have told her partner before, I have every intent of acquiring this house. I might as well, even if I'm having second thoughts about getting it for Luke. 
The moment we, the Wrights, had expressed interest in this place, we've had eyes set on us. If we don't buy it, that might as well be the signal to have busybodies gossip, gossip about how we may or may not have lost our fortune. Regardless of the fact that it is false, imagine... Image is everything when dealing with these people. The hell? I don't care how rich I am, I'm not gonna buy something that I don't want. It's like, yeah, I had interest in it, but I don't want it anymore, so whatever. Get over it. Mind your own business. These are the unspoken rules for people such as ourselves. Lame. And besides, I really did like this place. Why, everything here is absolutely wonderful. Well, except for this ugly painting in the study. Question the need for a meeting. This isn't the first estate we've acquired, of course. We've bought plenty of others from penthouses in Luxbourne to vacation and townhouses in nearby cities. It is, however, the first time that interior designer has asked for a meeting with me. Normally, I'd just let them do as they please and hope for the best. I found that they rather liked the creative freedom it lent them. They all bragged about it. Hannah Wright is living in a house I designed. I can make time, but I'm sure you're more than capable enough to work on your own, yes? Surely I would just get in the way and you can do things faster and more efficiently without my input. Because, no offense, if you're one of those workers who need constant supervision and hand-holding, you might as well tell me now so that I can look for another interior designer to work with. Damn, one option is her being, like, kind of mean. <laughs> the whole point of an interior designer is not it also like to work with them so you get what you want. Instead of being all like, just do whatever, I don't care. That's that's just going to end up with you going, man, this is actually kind of ugly and I don't want it. Surely this one will feel the same. Yes, I am capable of working without any design input and without supervision, Mrs. Wright. But it'd be entirely different if I know what you two would want for this home, how each room is meant to be used. You have to consider what sort of color palette you would want at the very least. Do consider that this will be your home and not mine. None of those houses ever did feel like a home. You won't give me a choice in the matter, will you? What? No. Y you do have a choice and... No, no, no. You've clearly made up your mind that we must meet. All right. Monday. Ten o'clock sharp. We'll see you then. Oh, I wonder why your houses haven't felt like a home. Maybe it's because you just let your interior designer do whatever and, like, label everything how they want without any of your input. So it makes you wonder why you enter a house that's supposed to be your home and you go, man, this really does- this feels like an interior designer designed it. Actually, Marianne suggests that we meet at nine, but who is even awake at that unholy hour? I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went off, went all the way to Cardiff. Cardiff. We say our goodbyes, shake hands, and make it clear without outright saying it that we now own this house. So, you really want to buy this place then? That's a bit of a big impulse buy, even coming from you. <laughs> not that I'm complaining. Well, I'm glad you're not complaining like you usually do. It's a right and proper Christmas miracle, isn't it? Hannah has finally done something right. I refuse to look at him staring at the passing scenery instead. Hey, Buttercup, what's with this cheek? Rose, Lily, Mint. The nerve, Luke, the nerve! Is that what this is about? One, that woman's name was Rose. And two, you know I don't mean a word of that empty flirting. And it's still the principle of things, Luke. I understand if you try to woo them to get what you want when it seems that I'm not looking. But I told you once before not to do it when I'm there. Luke dealt with other women in the past to get what he wanted. Sometimes I have my doubts. I really want to believe that I'm an exception that he's not just using me to- using me like how he used the other girls. I mean, he did in the beginning, and then he fell. But he's still kind of like... Mm. I am having a hard time believing that now. And it isn't just the shameless flirting. There's something about that Marianne woman as if Luke is familiar with her. As much as it shames me, it makes, it makes jealousy rear its ugly head. I am, suffice to say, ticked off. Really? 
I forfeit my trip to Cardiff for this, and you're still not happy. Oh, trust me, Luke. I am very happy. Very happy that, for once, we are doing something that I want. God, their relationship is a mess. Can you not see the smile on my face? It is only when I let, let loose those words that the truth hits me like a slap on the face. And by the looks of it, it seems to have the, ex the same effect on my dear darling husband. It has always been Luke wants to do this and Luke wants to do that, hasn't it? I don't even remember the last trip we went to, which was of my own choosing without needing to get the man's approval. On the other hand, I was pulled along to every single expedition he wished to tackle, and I never objected. The rest of the ride home is spent ignoring each other, pretending the other didn't exist. Arriving at our penthouse, my first order of business is to get into bed. Forget a hot bath and forget the tea, I just want to bury myself in blankets and forget everything in my slumber. It seems that Luke has the same idea in mind as he tags along behind me. But this is something I will not allow the moment I pass... Allow the moment I pass through the door. Out. What the bloody hell, woman? This is my bedroom too! Not anymore! Luke stands flabbergasted as I deny him entry into our chambers. Man... This feels more like a soap opera <laughs> than the last few times. His pillows lie on the cold tiled floors away from the warmth of our soft down bed, and my gaze promises him the same fate if he does not budge on this matter. Don't even try to argue, because I am very cross with you, Luke Wright. You can take the second bedroom or the guest room if you wish, but I do not want to see you at all for the rest of the night. Johans! Our butler wanders over, a curious expression on his face. He doesn't quite hurry, moving at a relaxed pace no matter how angry his master sounded. No, you are not allowed to sleep in my room, sir. That's not what I mean! Help me talk some sense into her! There is no sense in questioning her right to be angry, sir. Johannes is so funny, it's too bad he works for Luke. <laughs> so, if I might be excused, I'll go prepare the second bedroom for you. I have to keep a straight face as he stomps away in defeat. Mutiny! This is mutiny! Oh, he's such a little baby. The system is being upturned, and the people are rioting, and everything is left asunder. It isn't every day that Luke is rendered speechless by someone he considers inferior or to yield to another authority without an, uh, an ulterior motive. His pride just won't allow it. I do keep telling the man to treat his people better. He may throw whatever fits he wants, but he will not be getting his way tonight. Victorious, I celebrate by jumping face first into our bed. Undignified, yes, but nobody is here to judge me anyway, right? Nobody is here to tell me what to do. Yet as I succumb to sleep, I can hear them whisper to me. I can hear them whispering. Calling for me. They want me. Need me. They drown me, pull me down, and suffocate me in their embrace until I sink to the bottom. A deep abyss awaits, inviting, yet foreboding. They're calling to me from in there, aren't they? And I do want to help, I do. But when I try to reach out, something pulls me back like a hook sinking itself into my stomach. And I break through the surface with a gasp. Alone in bed, without Luke to hog the covers, I am swathed in, swathed in cloth and slick with sweat. It takes me a while to untangle myself and kick them all off. Both the bed and I are a right mess by the end of it, but I am more than eager to just get up and go out for, fr for some fresh air. The day's pass had gone by... The day's pass had gone by a blur. We hadn't talked much, Luke and I, outside of necessity. In fact, we've hardly talked beyond the topic of topic of acquisitions of properties. Properties being the mansion, obviously. Everything has been so busy that I haven't talked to anyone outside of business, and it is just so stressing. So one can understand my need for a good chat, preferably over a good meal. There are times when any decent, emotionally healthy, and socially, socially capable person need a good friend, one who will talk to them without the con conversation degrading or turning into an argument, or barring a nearby friend. I have an interior designer under a confidentially confidentiality agreement to listen to me. Uh, hiya. Come on now. The place is bustling with movers carrying furnishings here and there, along with several trunks of personal belongings taken from our penthouse. 
I can hear Luke barking at them in the other room, making sure nothing is handled carelessly or stolen. Or gets stolen. I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African blackwood and are one-of-a-kind commission paintings. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you not make. It is hard to tune him out. The walls did not, did not do a good job of muffling him at all. But then again, it is Luke. I would still hear him ranting even if we were on the opposite sides of the mansion and I'm wearing earplugs. I'd really like to thank you for inviting me to breakfast, Mrs. Wright. But I already ate, so I should really go back to work. Nonsense! You arrived so early, you must not have gotten a proper meal. Our butler has made a surprisingly lovely bubble and squeak. Sit, sit! I'd situate us in the dining hall, but it is a mess right now. What in the world is bubble and squeak? Cabbage and mashed potatoes fried together? Is that what she's talking about? Because that's what I googled. Oh, you Hans! The man in question appears ready with a tray as he starts to set the table for us. We sit in silence as we are each served a plate. That's not what I looked up. Bubble and squeak, topped by a nicely poached egg, with, or maybe it is, with cherry tomatoes and other garnishes adorning the edges of, of the plate. It doesn't really look like it, though. Then again, I don't know how you're supposed to convey cabbage mixed with potatoes. Visually, without having an actual picture. A cup and saucer and a teapot with some Earl Grey is placed down for Marianne, and I ask for an orange Julius. How are you liking the project? Drop that vase and I'll have your head! I know it's only an 8 million yen vase, but I swear, I... Well, it's certainly a fun challenge, incorporating the designs of a Jacobean manor and the functionality of a modern household. I have ideas I would like to suggest, by the way, about what to use the second bedroom for. I have been informed of your goddaughter and thought a kid-friendly room might be in order. You read my mind. I was actually going to bring that up. Oh, that would just be so lovely, Marianne. That way, Kylie can bring her friends over as well. And a good friend of mine, Brochelle, is expecting a baby. So, why don't we think about putting a crib in there, too? I can just imagine little ones running around, filling this place with the pitta-patta of their feet. We'd have to make sure they don't trip and fall on the stairs, though. We won't be able to finish everything up until after the party, but we'll have it ready by then, so that all we need to do is to move in the furnishings. Yes, that's plenty fine. It's not like we're in a hurry to have it. And we wouldn't want the workers to disturb the guests or the other way around, do we? Just make sure it's presentable. You know, in case a guest snoops about. Of course. As for the kitchen you wanted, I've already negotiated for the high-end stoves and the hot and cold drawers, so on and so forth. I've got a friend who was able to customize them so that they'll look like the counters we'll be replacing and fit the rest of the interior. They'll be bringing them in today. Why can't you people do anything right? Don't drag it, you'll scratch the wood. Excellent. But now, really, how have you liked it so far? Oh, it has been wonderful, believe me. Everything is going smoothly, too. It has been a long time since I've worked on something in this grand a scale. Nowadays, everyone is about condos and flats. Living in the city where every room is an identical box. Believe me, this is very refreshing. We lived in a condo before this, Marianne. Uh, I didn't mean any insult. I... It's fine, sweetie. Look at you, all frazzled. I was just pulling your leg. Luke wanted that penthouse when we got married, and you can thank him for purchasing this place as well. She looks confused. Of course she has every right to be. She no doubt overheard me pushed the, that estate agent into the sale, making quite the aggressive offer. She saw me sign the papers for the mansion as well. I, I just had to scoff. Don't be fooled. I'm just the treasury. I wouldn't be able to make a purchase this grand without his seal of approval. I see. That's it. That's all you have to say. Yes. It wouldn't be appropriate to comment further. It is unprofessional. Unprofessional? I can't help but let out a deep sigh as I stick a fork into the dish. I didn't want professional. I want someone who will either agree with me even if it's just for the sake of agreeing, or someone who will try to talk some sense into me. Neutral responses are so boring. There's no discourse in the middle ground. The food is good. Best bubble and squeak. Of course it is. Our kitchen staff only uses the freshest hand-picked ingredients. 
Only the best for the Wrights. Mr. Wright is not joining us? No. He is far too busy bossing people around. He even refused to join me for breakfast earlier. Hence, this. I see. My apologies. I really don't know what sort of response you expect to get from me. <laughs> There's a clatter of silverware as I slam my hands on the table. It is frustrating. Damn. <laughs> we really got, like... The completely just not all, like, prim and proper Hana. <laughs> and all it took was Luke flirting in front of her. I am frustrated. And Luke, mostly. But Marianne's neutral professional answers are certainly irksome as well. You're a human with feelings and opinions, aren't you? Don't give me this bollocks about being professional when we're having a nice, friendly chat over a nice and friendly breakfast. I can only talk about interior designs for so long, and I detest one-sided conversations, Marianne. But I, I really don't know what to say, Mrs. Wright. We were talking of no topic in particular, and... Luke. We were talking about Luke. About him not eating breakfast with you? About him treating me as if I were some treasury! I didn't realize that I shouted that, that out loud until it's too late. There's a stunned silence that settled before I slumped back into my seat. Hiding my face behind my hands, I can feel my shoulders shake. Breathe, I told myself. Calm down. But it's just so hard. Honestly, sometimes I feel like he doesn't love me anymore. Oh, have I been so blind? Did he ever love me at all? Was our marriage all for the sake of saving his company and his wealth? Because... Because? Did I say all that out loud again? No, this is bad. Unacceptable. It has been rumored before the real reason for our engagement, but if anyone were to know this, marriages of necessity to carry on political and financial power used to be a common thing, but Evan Wright's union is the perfect happily ever after. Was supposed to be. It is true that we first met each other in order to discuss dealings, to make the then-failing Wright Enterprise a subsidiary for Evans Incorporated. But I do remember being in love with him, and there were times when he said he loved me back, even if I'm not sure of what the truth is now. Either way, I do not want the Wright name or the Evans name dragged through the mud because of a slip-up. And if Marianne so much as talks of this, threaten her, ask for her silence. I couldn't, I couldn't be mean. <laughs> We're already going in through so much, it just, <laughs> we need to mellow out. Marianne is a good sort, isn't she? So far, she has been reasonable and accommodating, even toward Luke's ridiculous requests. Patient and professional, did it only extend to business? Or would she be able to understand that things like this are not as simple, not as clean as they are painted to be? Certainly, I can talk to her. Ask for her. I won't speak a word, Mrs. Wright. Not only am I contractually obliged to, it would also go against my principles. This is no one else's business but your own, and it should be kept between the two of you. And whoever you wish to seek counsel from... Please, Marianne, you have to understand these sort of affairs. If anyone were to know this, they could just twist it and we'll be ruined. All I ask for is your silence on the matter. If I am to be frank, Mrs. Wright, this isn't new for me. You aren't the first and you certainly won't be the last to have complicated dealings. Unless what you're doing is illegal, I turn a blind eye. Can I trust her? <laughs> if I wasn't in the same boat... I'd be trying to pry those secrets and gossip with you about them by now. Well, I'm keeping that information confidential as well. It's not like I have any other choice, do Thank I? Thank you. We continue to eat our meal in peace, finishing the last of the food and drink. When the door to the parlor opened, Marianne and I are just sitting in silence. Madam, the photographer from Luxury Living is here. I give him nothing but a small nod. This was a wonderful meal, Marianne. You're free to return to your duties. I must excuse myself. It was my pleasure. And thank you for the food as well. 
Making my way downstairs, I look back and see Marianne give me a nod and a small smile. That certainly puts me in lighter spirits. An interview with Luxury Living. That is today, isn't it? Oh, yes. People had caught wind of our new mansion the very moment we left the open house. Luke had boasted he could acquire the property in no time and allow a photo shoot for an interior design magazine to be scheduled today. Well, there were complications, and it took longer than it usually does for us. Hopefully I won't have any other unfortunate slip-ups with someone who isn't bound by confidentiality. Continue teasing. This is who I am, and I'm not going to tone myself down for somebody else. I have no obligation to do so. At any rate, he's rather cute, and it's a bit fun seeing him squirm. What's the worst that can happen? I doubt it will be anything bad considering how much of a gentleman he is. Uh, stop doing what, Zack, sweetie? Touching my arm and looking at me like... that. I pause, giving him a baffled look. This is certainly the first time a man has ever complained about me being too friendly. I'm not doing anything wrong. Come on now, don't be like that. It's just a bit of fun. A bit of harmless fun. I'm sorry, it's just really uncomfortable and... And, and I don't think either of us want Mr. Wright to see us and think there's any funny business. I'm sorry. Look, can we just... We're finished with the interview already, aren't we? Uh, maybe it's about time I go. Oh, you must be joking. No, no, I'm not. You're certainly the odd one. Don't be such a killjoy. A little bit of flirting never hurts anyone. Other men would simply be delighted by my interest in them. Besides, you really are such a cutie. Well, I'm not like other men. Please leave me alone. Well, I'm not them, Hannah. So, yeah, I'm probably odd. I don't understand you. Let me put it this way. You're a pretty lady, so this must have happened to you at least once or twice. How would you feel if someone was making you uncomfortable? Only for them to refuse when you ask them to stop and they make you out to be the one that's wrong? This isn't. This isn't the same as that. As I try to argue his point, he starts to pack the rest of his bags. This is preposterous. My main argument is, what sort of man complains about a beautiful woman being friendly with them? It seems logical in my head, but the moment I try to say it, it starts to fall apart. Yes, it is. Unwanted advances don't make me feel macho or anything like that. I'm not here to argue morals or ethics, Miss Wright. I think I have more than enough for the interview, if that's fine with you. I may be starting to overstay my welcome. I feel deflated. And things were going so smoothly, too. I ended up pushing too hard just when I might have found myself a good friend. I'm not sure if I feel awful because I'm not getting what I want or because I was just compared to the pigs I so despise. You're not even going to let me apologize. You're not a bad person, Hana. Just... Because I really am sorry. People won't always be how you want them to be. And apology accepted. But I really do need to go. A friend of mine is expecting me and it's getting late. Will you visit again? I will be asking for copies of those photographs. Yeah, sure. I'll make you a copy. That will be much appreciated. I'll ask Johans to see you out. I feel sick to my stomach as I watch Zachary leave. It is silly to be upset over a falling out with a man who was, only a few hours ago, a complete stranger to me. That doesn't excuse my boorish behavior at all, and it doesn't make the ill feeling any better. Idling about, I stare off into space unsure of how I feel. And I stay a good while, just standing there until the sun sets in the horizon. This heart and I proceed back into the mansion for supper. I was tending the gardens. I was just tending to the gardens, sweetie. You were? For a moment he looks skeptical. I can tell by the gleam in his eyes and the way he sits up in, att in attention. He thinks I'm lying. But I see no point in bringing up Zachary and aggravating him. I did tend to the gardens for a bit, so it's not a complete lie. Just a little white lie. Besides, I know just how to please him. Sauntering over and circling around him, I place my fingers on his shoulders. He lets out a little groan before melting like butter as I massage his shoulders. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure they didn't ruin your favorite daffodils. Oh, that is wonderful. I'm not sure if he means the, mess the massage or the flowers, but I'll take it. This is better than a fight. So, absinthe. Just one glass, mm, loose. Uh, I suppose I can let this one go. A bit too late anyway, you've already drank half the thing. But remember your doctor's orders. Yes, yes, I'll try to drink less. Try. Hey, I'm only human. Do you want one? No, thank you. Supper is spent in silence with nothing but the occasional sound of silverware. A grand feast has been served, well, grander than usual anyway, most likely due to Luke's complaints of stress. 
Uh oh. <laughs> may not be going down, but there's no point in talking through closed doors or hatches in this case. The thing refuses to budge at first until there is a soft click, and it easily swings free. As I lift up the hatch and look down into the cellar, a sense of uneasiness washes, o washes over me. It isn't just the sudden onset of vertigo and nausea, but also the darkness. It's suffocating. And as I look down, it feels as if it's looking back at me. I worry that something will suddenly pull me into the deep. I can hear her whispering, help me calling for me. She wants me, needs me. She wants to drown me, pull me down, and suffocate me in her embrace until I sink to the bottom. A deep abyss waits, inviting yet foreboding. She's calling to me from in there, isn't she? And I do want to help, I do. But the shadows threaten to creep out and a feeling of apprehension keeps me in place. Already it paints the room in a darker light. This is like the dream all over again. There is a hook in my stomach as well, but this time it doesn't pull me back. Instead, it pulls me forward. There is a lurching sensation and the feeling that follows after is hard to explain. It feels like I'm watching myself from the sidelines, a spectator to my actions or lack thereof. I will myself to snap out of this detached feeling, to move, to do anything except stare at myself. And for a moment I see the look of fear in my own face. I'm back in my body, but the hook in my stomach is no longer the only one. There are hooks everywhere, tearing and pulling at my skin, flesh, and bones. They pull at me in every direction, and it hurts. It hurts so much, but I just can't bring myself to scream out. Help me. I wake from a deep slumber. It takes a while with the fog that has settled in my head and with my heavy limbs, but soon enough I manage to look around. I'm in our bedroom already, although I do not recall going here. Luke slumbers beside me, looking peaceful and, and, and angelic. It doesn't matter. I'm safe and I feel better than ever. Tomorrow, better days will come. Luke is already gone by the time I rise. What do I think of the mater, Mum? No, what do you think of my hair? It feels so lifeless and dull today, and that's no good for a party. And I think I'm breaking out into zits. Now that you mention it, there is something different. There better not be something on my face. I wouldn't worry about that. You do look a little paler than usual, ma'am. I apologize if I'm crossing any lines here, but have you been resting properly? Huh. You'd think I get a bit tanned with how sunny it's been lately. Don't you worry. I feel right as rain and never better, but back to the matter at hand. You were asking for my personal opinion on the matter, ma'am? Do you want me to be honest, or...? I don't know. I don't know, Marianne. I just... She hesitates, taking a sip of her coffee while I stare into my own cup of tea before she speaks. Perhaps it has been the years. Perhaps not. It might just be the little things that have built up all this time. It might be something big. I wouldn't know all the details, but in any case, with things like these, I've seen couples take time apart just to cool off. Sometimes they get back together in the end with lighter hearts, and sometimes they don't get back together at all, but part on better terms. Speaking from experience, are we, Miss McCullough? Well, that certainly got a rise out of her as her cheeks turned red and she nearly choked on her coffee. Oh, uh, no, 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 <laughs> nothing like that. I ain't... I'm not interested in any phallor, even. It's just a thing I've seen happen a few times. What if I said the couple are very public figures? They wouldn't want to take time apart unless it was really necessary. They wouldn't want people to... talk. Well, that's a load of guff. Not to mention that makes them a bit thick, doesn't it? Forget about what other people say. That's their relationship, and they should do what's best for them. And if they point out that you're being a hypocrite, and they can also disregard what you say... Then that's their choice. I'm just saying that a break might do them good. A short time apart is better than someone trying to leg it out of the relationship or one ending up trying to murder the other out of frustration if they're even the slightest bit touched in the head. Because we don't want now, do we? She trails off, having said her piece, and leaves nothing but the smell of coffee and Earl Grey between us. There is a calm despite the nature of what had just been discussed. To say that her words make me start to think is an understatement. To say that I'm not considering her advice is a lie. And to say that this might just be the calm before the storm is a possibility. 
Others have had shorter marriages, yes, but plenty have celebrated long and happy ones as well. My own parents celebrated their choral anniversary before they passed away. But seven years? Seven years isn't a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. It isn't a whole lot of time to see what, what and where our relationship can bring us. And at the same time, seven years, well, it hasn't been entirely made up of happy years, has it? It won't last forever. It's not supposed to, anyway. I just dread the thought that this might last for a very long time. I dread the thought of these small spats, these little disagreements, will turn into an all-out resentment. The idea that we will grow to hate each other with every fiber of our being scares me. When did he start to seek other women, lacking any ulterior motives? When did we start to cooperate only to suit our materialistic greed and attention-seeking ways? Money and success, fame and glamour, all those... Are those the only reasons we still stay together? There's a cough before Marianne clears her throat. I must have been quiet for so long and I move to apologize when she stands up. We both end up on our feet unsure of how to proceed. Some sort of odd, awkward shuffle occurs as we decide whether to sit back down or not. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party? Oh, you really must, Marianne. I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Busy, busy, busy. You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends, and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees, at least. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. We'll see. So, if Foy can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. I had invited Father Norman too. It's the least I can do after he blessed the mansion on my request, aside from my small donation to the church, of course. But the poor man had taken ill and went through a nervous breakdown of some sort the other day. And then there are people like the chief inspector. People who can never, I can never be too sure about. People who stand on the border between being suspicious and being un and being trustworthy. Thank you for the invite, Anna. Husband still missing, I see. It is now that Johannes returns with security along with a concerned looking Officer Lee. They surround her, uh, Rochelle, and move to escort the hysterical woman. Judging by his pale face, he has heard the whole thing and I feel nothing but pity for the man. Not that I believe Rochelle. Luke will never... He will never go so far as to sleep with another woman, right? I'm so sorry for her behavior. She's been under a lot of stress. And the alcohol. Talking nonsense, that's all it is. You're not allowed to drink because of the baby, Shelley. What are you thinking? Nothing to see here, people. Move along. Is there really nothing here but the ramblings of a drunk? Of course there's nothing but ramblings of a drunk. She's just jealous. Jealous of this wonderful marriage, this happily ever after that I have with my prince. Take that troll up out of here immediately! And see to it that she isn't allowed to hear, or anywhere we hold any authority in Luxborn. To be banned from anything with the right name on it is basically social suicide. We practically own half of Luxborn, and there isn't a single establishment of repute that isn't under our patronage one way or another. This is Mercy. I can do much worse to her. At least this way she can just move out of the city and never ever return. I have stayed my hand in the face of her grievous fault, her bold-faced lies when she deserves so much more. Damn. D was that, was that, uh, the, the cellar thing? The crossing point of whether the ghost takes over or whatever. Or maybe not like takes over, but influences. I can take away her business, have her factory shut down. It is too easy to ruin her life until she is just nothing. And it is all so tempting. I can only see red. The tension is sick in the air and the silence that embraces the room is nearly deafening. There are worried and almost fearful glances from some of the guests, yet at the same time I can still hear them whispering. But as long as they hold their tongues and don't interfere, none of none of those matter to me. Especially when my darling looks at me with a different shine in his eyes. It almost seems as if he's proud of what I have done, and that spurs me on more than anything. Everyone, please go back to enjoying the party. Don't let that mess of a woman ruin your night. You heard her? Strike up the band, maestro, and let us dance like fireflies in the night! It takes a bit for the crowd to stir again in the face of all that. But like most problems of the the elite, it is brushed under the rug and forgotten in favor of merriment. He offers his hand to me with a small smirk and a bow. Well, that was a mess, wasn't it? And you handled it magnificently. It happens. 
We are very important people, are we not? Milady, would you like to dance? With pleasure, my prince. No one is going to get in between me and my darling husband. Not Rochelle or any other rich, snooty scrubber. Not some common whore or an, or an ambitious maid. No one is going to get near him in that manner, not while I'm around. And if I have anything to say about it, no one is going to get near him at all. Yikes. We didn't even get the ch the choice to... to go on break or not. Whatever, whatever that one was. <laughs> the day after proved to be a difficult task. My darling prince is a man of many connections, a man of the people. He is always talking to one person or another, and I am always left alone, unable to stay at his side at all times. It is frustrating, but I have to be understanding. Besides, I don't see why he can't just stay at home. The least I can do is to make sure I have his time while he's here, which in and of itself isn't as easy as it sounds. Not with that bloody valet of his tailing him around. Johans! Where's my tie? I can't find it anywhere. Have you looked around your neck? It should be there if it's not on your clothes horse, sir. It isn't often that I'm awake this early, at least early enough to find my darling preparing for the day with his valet attending to him. It is an old-fashioned way to go about the morning. He's able to dress himself, after all. But he says that it really makes the day easier for him to have someone else do this tedious task, albeit with a grimace. Though if that manservant of his dislikes the duty so much, I'll gladly do it in his stead. I've got it, my prince. Come here. Well, someone's up and at them especially early this morning, huh? Here I thought you'd be knackered by all the dancing we did last night at the party. And after that... Well... Ew. A saucy little wink and a smile is what he offers me as I draw close to fix his tie. And when the valet reaches out with his perfume, I quickly take it and shoo him aside. This close scent fills me with the smell of white flowers, cocoa, cardamom, and almonds. It is intoxicating, and the sight of the two of us in the vanity mirror is picturesque and perfect. Can I help it if I feel a bit of resentment that another person g gets to do this for Luke every morning when I could have done it myself? No, no, I can't. You're dismissed, Shroken. I have this. Go on, then. You'll be summoned if you're needed. There's a curious look, furred brows before any sign that he cares is wiped from his expression. Very well. Johannes is just like, yeah, this is weird. This is not her personality. If you need me, I'll be somewhere that isn't here. You could have let the man do his job. And I say there's no need for him. I can take care of you just fine, my prince. Just where are you off to this morning anyway? I hate the thought of him leaving me. It feels like an eternity without him in this lonely place that doesn't feel like a home quite yet. Although the mansion is really growing on me, surely, slowly but surely. I want to be at his side, yet he fails to see such an obvious thing. Business. Where else? Why can't you just work from home? You can afford to, can't you? Business needs a firm hand and a personal touch, Buttercup. Besides, I can't stay cooped up forever in here. I'll go mad. Well, you'll come back home as soon as possible, won't you? It's so awfully lonely here without you, my prince. I could. I don't see why I should, though. This hasn't been a problem before. You know I'll come home when I come home. Just get home as soon as you can. For me, won't you? No promises. It's business after all. I can't just stand up in the middle of the meeting and tell them the wife wants me home. Then forget those peasants. He stops and stares, looking perturbed for a moment before shaking his head. He's also just like, Excuse me, that's my word. <laughs> What are you calling people peasants for? That's what, that's, that's what, that's my thing. That's what I do. Is he feeling ill? There's more reason for him to stay here with me, doesn't it? I, I'm just being a good wife, worrying about my husband and all. Be good, dear. And stay safe. There's been all sorts of dodgy characters seen about the property. I'll be leaving Johans with you, just in case you need anything, and to be on the safe side, okay? But I don't need a valet. I need you, here with me! I'll be closing a big deal with a pharmaceutical company soon, if things go according to plan. Maybe, after that, I can take a breather for a bit. No maybes. You have to promise me! I feel like whenever something's wrong with Hana, that's when Luke actually starts to, like, soften up a bit. But any other time, he's still just... being him. <laughs> 
I only need him. I'm going to be late, Hana. The longer this takes, the later I'll get home. Fine. Shall I see you out? If that's what you want. At the front door, his valet waits, ready to accompany him for the rest of the day when he's told to stay and attend to me. I still don't like it. It looks like he doesn't either, but I ignore him in favor of the one who really matters. I hold Luke's hand in mine and give him a deep kiss. It makes my heart flutter as I see the way his eyes close during our moment of passion. Parting for air, I can only smile. Have a good day, my prince. Right. Off I go. Considering she's never called him that before up until this and she says it like all the time, I would have been like, okay, <laughs> where's this affectionate name coming from? This term of endearment. I still don't want him to leave. He should just stay forever. If you could let go of my hand, please, Hana. It's just so hard to let go when I finally have him in my grasp. Or maybe... She is fully taken, maybe not like fully taken over, but like enough. <laughs> to watch him enter his car and leave pains me so. It leaves behind an aching, gaping hole like a hunger and a need. I'm not content until he returns. If it fits you, breakfast is ready in the parlor, madam. If anything, I'll be in a foul mood until he returns. Leave and go practice your bloody sodomy elsewhere. <laughs> this is really just like, excuse me? You've never had an issue with my husband before. When I turn around to hiss at him to leave, he's already gone and that suits me just fine. I want to be alone without anyone bothering me. I want to be alone with myself and my thoughts with only these halls as company. These damn halls which hold, will hold our memories, just he and I. There's no one else I need but my prince. Not some cheeky servant who's just living it up because he's Luke's right-hand man. Rubbish like him deserve nothing. You know how much shit he has to deal with. He has to deal with Luke in general and also his underhanded dealings. You know how much, like, that is so much he has to deal with and he still stays there. From what we know, he's loyal to, like, like, not an extent, but, like, he's loyal but not to the point of being a simpering dog. He deserves to be thrown and locked in the attic. Without realizing it, my feet have brought me in here. This empty, lifeless room disgusts me. The longer I stare at it, the harder it gets to breathe, as if the walls are moving in on me. Yet at the same time, it pulls me in. I hear a whispering and curiosity gets the better of me as I look under the bed. There on the far corner, a loose floorboard. The wood, despite having swelled and warped over the years, is strangely familiar, comforting in its feel. Though it's not merely what my hand searches for as I reach for it, it takes quite an effort, but soon I am able to lift it. And inside, underneath the dust and cobwebs, lies a pendant, warm and familiar. And I swear if I close my eyes, I can feel it beating in my palm. I feel a thrill, though I also feel like a thief for taking this, but it's mine. So without delay, I hide in our room. In front of the vanity, I see the ways my eyes shine as I remove the clasp of my old necklace and put on this new one. It fits a lot better than the old one. I can feel it as it weighs on my chest. Right where it belongs. Oh god. So, I was expecting to eventually get like the possession thing going, but I wasn't really prepared for it. She real damn. That the cellar portion where she opens the hatch is a really... I think that's like the biggest point of change for Hana. I guess like the, the whole her frozen in fear thing was like an opportunity for the ghost to take over or like weasel in. Uh, the thing that I'm questioning, though, is how much is the ghost as the maid and as Charlotte? Is that her name? I always forget. <laughs> because uh, they both seem like they're obsessed, but from what we can see... It's always the maid that pops up. 
But I can't tell, are the help me's even the maid at all? Or is it the people that were taken? The people that had died because of Charlotte and the maid? So I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see how the, this whole thing even came about. It definitely was, I, I think it was definitely the maid who started up the whole curse. Because that's definitely all her resentment. I'm just curious like how Sh Charlotte is like intertwined into it. Because we saw her do some weird like ritual thing. But like a part of me now feels like it uh, it doesn't really have as much of an impact in the curse as much as the maid does. Like maybe there's a tie in with the necklace too because there has to be a reason why the necklace is there unless it's just like um it's the last remaining connection to the maid. So that just it might end up just being like the core of it and maybe uh of the things that need to be thrown away and burned and stuff, the necklace is probably the biggest offender. Not the letter, not the mansion, the necklace. I mean, the, the, the mansion should probably be torn down as well, considering how much death is involved in it. And the letter is really just nothing. I, I feel like there there's just... uh. There might be a little bit on it, but ultimately, I think it's being in the um, the mansion itself. The letter, you could probably have like gotten a copy of it or something and it wouldn't have mattered because the, the letter was made, like, I think they found it and then it was like written on by the, the students and it's just a thing, an artifact. So yeah, we have a little romance, we got a little romance that happened with Isabella and Ash. Unintentional, I'll have you know. <laughs> Was not expecting it. Um, we have Hana being possessed and it's so obvious. <laughs> Does it... We, we know how she is, usually. She's not a bad person, and she cares about other people. And then you have this sudden switch, and it's just like, um... <laughs> something's wrong. But of course, like, you can't really do anything about it right away. I have hiccups. A little bit of hiccups. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> yeah. I think expect we're gonna expect that like things are not gonna turn out very well because of this. I don't know how. I don't know how Isabella's gonna survive. <laughs> Will it be a paranoid ending? Like she's she's not gonna have like a happy end. She's going to be paranoid, or is she actually going to die? We don't know. We'll have to see. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you guys have a good day and a good night. Bye.